<laughs> All right, how weekend? It is time for us to get started. So we actually get to stay together today. Um, so I don't know what other teachers were doing, but today I really am glad that we get to be together for this at least part of this uh, explanation of supply and demand. Because supply and demand is, is uh, it's easy to understand because it's common sense. However, once you start graphing it, um, it, it becomes a little more complicated, okay? It's certainly not impossible, but it's certain, it does become more complicated. Um, supply and demand is, we're, uh, I want to spend about five days on this. We're doing nothing but demand. We always say supply and demand, but we're going to do demand first. And then we'll do everything we're doing today. The good news is we'll do tomorrow with supply. So I hope that we can have this quiz on Friday and be done with supply and demand. Um, because it's just one of those things that if we have a milestone, don't think we will, but if we have a milestone and certainly on your exam, you'll need to understand supply and demand. But it's like production possibility curves. We have this big explanation and then you go, well, that's not hard. But if you get it right at first, you're fine. But if you ever try to play catch up with this, then it becomes more difficult. OK, so what we're going to do is baby steps and you're going to be insulted sometimes where you go, this is not hard. Um, but I, I tried to make it logically, progressively a little bit harder. OK, so we're starting with really, really easy stuff. Um, the first curve we're going to we're, we're actually doing two things today. One of the things we're doing is quantity demanded. Um, quantity demanded. And then a whole separate lecture is on the changing demand curve. So we've got two topics today. They are two totally separate things, okay? So we're going to start with the easy concept first. Uh, quantity demanded. So this is common sense. What happens to the demand for a product when the price goes up? Demand will go down. Yes, drop. That's quantity demanded. How many will be demanded at a certain price? That's what quantity demanded is. It's all based on price and that's certainly not hard, right? Okay, everybody knows that. So we're going to baby practice, and it'll take five seconds for us to do this. So get a pencil or a pen or something out. I'm going to give you a graph, and we're simply going to plot one. Look at this, like, I promise, this is like third grade. Okay, but it's a good starting point. All right, super easy. All those explanations are on the sheet. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, if you were out on Friday, you missed the test. So remember that. Um, Okay, so demand curve practice worksheet. I promise this is fourth grade level, maybe even third. So, thank you. We got I've, lots of papers today, but they're certainly not hard. Okay, so look at your graph in front of you. And we're going to plot the points. That's all. We're, and look, the numbers are already on there. So go ahead and plot the points on your curve. Go. Use that table. I'm going to sketch a basic one up here.
Okay, everybody done? Whew, that was hard. Okay, what you did was called plotting the, making a demand curve based on price. This is how many will people buy at a certain price. Now, as a business person, this becomes very important to you, right? Now, let's take, let's get a few basics straight. Every time you do a supply and demand curve, this is going to be true. Look, 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 look. Price will always go right there. So label that price. You got to label. Get in the habit of labeling. Good. And across the bottom will always be quantity. How many? When we do supply and demand, that is always going to be true. So at, uh, is this, does it say candy? Yeah, it is candy bars. Candy bars, if, if, if you charge 50 cents, then people will buy 200 at that price. And what happens to demand as the price goes up? Demand will decrease, yes. Now, if it helps you see this, and some kids it does, look, 200 so, uh, it's two hundred, two dollars. Now, some people this helps. If you get this, you don't have to do this. But look, you could say at two dollars, and look at the point, just like you do in math. Don't you put the little points there? So at two dollars, it was seventy. That's the point. So at two dollars, you will sell seventy. At a dollar fifty you will sell a hundred. So dollar fifty, we could put a hundred right there. Just to, so kids can see where the points are. Do you get what I'm doing? Okay. So if you charge a dollar, if you say a dollar, then the point would be at one, you will sell 150. Demand will be at 150. You see what I'm doing? To help you see the graph. Any questions so far? Okay. So, look at your first question on your sheet. Explain what happens as the price of candy bars increase. Demand will... As the price increases, demand will decrease. Very good. And what you've just plotted is quantity demanded. How many? will sell at a certain price. How many will be demanded at a certain price? That is quantity demanded. Now, you're going to see this written like QD. So you got to know what QD means, quantity demanded. How many? How many? That's easy. Okay, now we've got to learn two concepts here. Look at the next question. What might a consumer choose to do once the price of candy bars reach three dollars. Okay, now we need to talk about what we've just plotted is the law of demand. The higher the price, the less that will be demanded. That's the law of demand. Now look, you don't even have to write this down, okay? Just listen. We need to talk about two concepts called substitution and complementary goods. So substitution is when you're standing in line and you look at and go, oh, a key cap on you go, ooh, three dollars. Okay. Choices. That's choices. So, do you go for a cheaper bar? That's a substitution. That's all I need, y'all. This is not hard, right? This is common sense. The higher the price, the less people are going to buy, or they're going to substitute another good, aren't they? Buy something cheaper. So, if the price of sugar goes up, what are candy makers looking at? Candy makers are going, oh, crap, aren't they? Because they don't want this to happen, do they? They don't want prices to go up. Have you noticed how candy bars have gotten a lot smaller than they used to be? You pull that Twix bar out and you go, God, they're like this big. But yet the same price. What have they done? They don't want to change the price, do they? Because look what happens when you change the price. Candy makers don't want to raise prices, do they? Because what do people do? Not buy it. If the price goes up, so what they try to do is trick us by saying, oh, let's just make the bar a little bit smaller. They won't notice. That's their option, isn't it? 
So what we will do as consumers, now with demand, you always think of as consumers. This is how we act, didn't it? We business people know that if you raise the price on that uh, cereal, what do people do? They either don't buy it or they go buy a substitute. Now, what's a substitute for Fruit Loops? The off-brand, right? Do y'all buy the off-brand? Anybody like the off-brand? Some kids, some people like the off-brand better. But that's what the off-brand's for, isn't it? To substitute. So instead of that expensive brand of Fruit Loops, you go buy the cheaper version. That's a substitute. Or you buy some other cereal that's just not expensive, as expensive. That's a substitute. So we make choices. When the price goes higher, we will make substitutions, don't we? We buy sugar and uh, the price of sugar goes up, the price of oil goes up or anything like that. We will make substitutions. We will make substitutions. That one. Thank you. All right. We're going to put you. <laughs> uh, you'll have to get a little more room. All right. So that is de that is quantity demanded. How many will people buy at a certain price? Now, any time you talk about price, this is what you need to focus on. Okay. This is quantity demanded. All right. Now we're going to practice again. Easy, because we're moving on. One side, just to practice ice cream at the top. Ice cream at the top. Here we go. Ice cream. Ice cream. We're just doing the front two. Do ice cream and flower bulbs. I just started coming up. I'm not very creative. Oh, I just moved my All right, here we go. Um, plot those points. I took, I just whited out. Supply. I don't want you to do supply Ooh. yet. We're not ready for that. Okay. All right, two graphs on the front. Do ice cream and flower bowls. Exactly the same thing. Now, figure out uh, the combination. Um, figure out what will fit on your on your chart there. Okay, did you do both of them? Go ahead and do both of them. Okay, go ahead and connect your dots on your on your demand curve. What you're plotting is demand curve. 
What you notice about both of those? Look at the direction every single time. One. Because as the price goes up, what's going to happen? People are going to demand less. All three curves that we just did are all the same direction, aren't they? This is called an inverse correlation between price and quantity demanded. How many people are willing to buy at a certain price? As, look, the price goes up, demand will decrease. As the price goes up, quantity demanded will decrease. Quantity demanded. How many people are willing to buy at that price will decrease. Now, the opposite can be true. As the price drops, what's going to happen to quantity demanded? It will increase. Now, y'all already knew all that, didn't you? You've just never seen our graph before. That's all. It's common sense. Supply and demand is common sense. Think about a, a consumer. Now, um, as at demand... I always tell kids to write this down because we don't have any notes for this unit, okay? The notes do us no good. You have to see this and have to practice it like this. So demand, you want to think like a consumer. With supply, you want to think like a businessman. But um, with, a, with a consumer, we, we are the demanders. We are the people who go buy things. So that is, so always think like a consumer. Okay, everybody's good, right? This is, you're sitting here going, oh my God, this is so easy. Yes, it is. But we're about to kick it up a notch, okay? So now, this is quantity demanded. That is topic number one for today. Now we're ready for topic number two. We ready to move on? All right, we don't even need, did I print that on the back? I did. Do we need to do more? You probably don't, do you? Okay, we're not. If you're okay, you can plot these if you want to. Notice how I took supply off. We're not ready for supply. We're doing one thing. This is quantity demanded. If the price goes up, what's going to happen? So anytime it says the price increased to $50, to $50, then you know demand is going to go down. The quantity demand, how many people are going to buy it is going to go down. Quantity demanded will go down. Now, we're, not, we're just going to skip this because y'all are so gifted, right? Look, you got that in 10 minutes. Okay, now let's see how you do All right, so now put those away. You can put those to the side. We're through with those. And we are through with this topic. Now we're going to move on to a new topic called shifting the demand curve. Now we're going to move to a whole different level and Project number two here is we're going to change. Now, you don't even have to fill this out, y'all. We're going to go through a PowerPoint together, okay? So, three, four. Okay, just look at these. Don't even write your name on it. I'm not taking them up. I'm telling you right now, I'm not taking them up. This is just a, how can we walk through this together and make it super, super easy Explanation. Okay, you're going, oh my God. But I'm telling you, you don't have to turn it in. So this case, right? All right. Now, what we're going to do is go through a PowerPoint together and look at what changes the demand curve. There we go. All right, have I got one? Okay. Now, let me turn on my screen and we'll do this power.
No, I just had it. I just did it this morning. All right, now you might need to write some of these notes down. Thank you, just a little bit, yes. Um, okay, now we're going to move to changing the demand curve. So this is a whole different thing. This we're not talking about. Uh, we're not plotting points about um, prices. Okay. Now what we're going to do is change the demand curve. We're not just talking. There are things that change the demand curve that are that are really not about price. Okay. How much does it cost? All right. So let's look. I will fix that. In a minute. Okay. Which toothpaste would you buy? Now you don't have to write this down. All I'm doing is just walking you through this to let you see if we can answer these questions, okay? So look, as a consumer, this is what we're interested in. So do I care? This is just personal preference, isn't it? Do y'all have a preference about toothpaste? Do y'all do you use the same toothpaste all the time? Do you buy different stuff? Who does the same all the time? You do? Okay, are you a Colgate person or a Crest person? Oh, really? Okay, so if the price is the same, then you're going to go for this. Okay? Now, if the price is the same, but what if the price changes? Mm. Still, boy, businesses love you uh, because you're a loyal consumer. That's good. Businesses love people like you that buy the same stuff no matter what the price is. But this is person, personal preference, right? If the, if the price changes, are you going to stick with it? Or are you going, I'm not paying for that when I can get this one? Taste and preference can change demand. Okay, let's look, look at the question. Which brand of toothpaste would you buy? Okay, we already answered that question. Now... Now, look at this article, and I didn't print this article. Let me just read you this hypothetical situation, of course. The public outcry has escalated in recent days as more and more people continue to gather outside the Crest Toothpaste Distribution Center. Hundreds of protesters have been gathering to bring attention to the string of toothpaste-related illnesses and deaths in the last month. Mm -hmm. To date, the death toll has reached 30 from Crest Toothpaste. Now, which one do you buy? What's going to happen? Trust the demand for Crest will decrease because people are going, oh, oh my God. Okay, first of all, this is not true. <laughs> okay, but taste and preference. Let's go back to the other picture. Now you find out, or there's a new news press release that Crest is causing 30 deaths in this little West Virginia town. What's going to happen to demand for Crest? It will drop. Okay, so what you've just done is shifted the demand curve because people have quit buying this and gone to other products. So demand for Crest will decrease. So what you've done is shifted the demand curve. Look at your next question. Did you change your preference? Why? Explain how consumer taste and preferences change demand for a product in good and bad scenarios. What if you hear something good? What if you hear that, that Crest is a wonderful product and actually your teeth will never fall out or you'll never get cavities and stuff like that. Don't they promise stuff like that? But if, if you hear good news, it will change demand based on taste and preferences. Okay? We'll practice this in just a minute. All right, now let's go to the next practice one. All right, what, what you're going to buy? If... Now, you can't see that. I was afraid you couldn't see this in the black. Plan your next three days meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner from these two choices, and your budget is $20. Your budget's $20. This is $0.50. Cents. This is $8. Now, just think about this. This is why we're not really doing it, because you get where this is headed. Think about your meals. Look at your chart there. Think about your meals. How many cups of this are you going to end up eating? A lot, right? Why do ramen noodles sell so well? Why do college kids have cases of them? They're good and they're cheap. 
Okay? They're good. They're quick. They're cheap. Easy. Microwave. Done. Now, let's give yourself a raise, though. Let's pretend you've got more money. And Whoops, not shoes. You've got more money. You now get a raise. Look down at the bottom of your paper here. Now give yourself a new budget of $100 instead of $20 for food. So what's going to happen? Look at question number three at the very bottom. What happened to the demand for noodles as income increases? You got more money to spend. What are you going to do? You're going to move away from, you're going to go toward better food, aren't you? Better restaurants. Some ramen, you're not, you're not going to give them up altogether, are you? But they're certainly going to be lower on your menu. You can buy the good stuff now because you got a bigger pay raise. So consumer income drives what people buy. It does. Give me a pay raise. I'm going to get the good cereal. I'm not going to buy that off-brand anymore unless I want to. Now, the off-brands are known as inferior goods. Where you go to the store and go, do I buy the Kroger brand or do I buy this off-brand? Those are known as inferior goods. Or do I buy the good stuff, which are called normal goods? Do you buy the cheap toilet paper or the good paper towels? That kind of stuff, okay? Now, I buy the cheap ones to come to school because I don't care about y'all. I buy the cheap paper towels, okay? These are the cheap ones. I got the good stuff at home, okay? Inferior goods, the good stuff's at the house. Those are, those are um, nor they're called normal goods, which is the good stuff. So and when you get a, a pay increase, it makes a difference as to what you buy, okay? Flip to the back. All right, another question that will ch change demand is sales, consumer expectations about future prices. What's demand going to be like today? Look, if you know 50% off is coming on Friday, what's going, what's going to happen to demand today? None, right? Why would I go buy shoes today when I know they're going to be 50% off on Friday? Duh, what idiot goes today? You wait till Friday, right? That's what Black Friday's all about. Now, why are we moving away from Black Friday? COVID, of course. But online stuff. Stores are beating each other to the punch, aren't they? They're starting to do 50% off a week before Black Friday anymore, right? So things are changing. But this drives consumer expectations and future prices will, will create demand now or later. Okay? Look at the poster. Will you buy shoes today or tomorrow? Why? The relationship between a change in price and the future of your purchases. You see how this drives demand? No, I'm not going today. I'm going Friday. So demand, what's going to happen now? It's going to be bad, right? The stores are going to be pretty empty today. But they're getting ready for Friday, aren't they? All right, another thing, look at number four, the price of substitute goods. All right, what are substitutes? Substitutes are things that you can go, I'm not going to buy this because this one's cheaper. Okay, these little markers, you'd be surprised how expensive these things are. Are there off brands for this? Are there inferior brands for this? Yes. Are they inferior? Yes, they are. Okay, but demand, this is a, a, a normal good because this is the name brand, um, but if I use them a lot and they use up and all that stuff, then price of substitutes. I can substitute this, can I? All right, look at your questions. What will happen to the store at the higher price? I know you can't see this. This says burger and fries, $8, burger and fries, $6, and the food is just as good. So are you going to pay $8 or are you going to pay $6? If they're close to your house, that's not a problem. That's not the question. The question is, why would you pay $8 when this is just as good? So the price of substitute goods, and are you willing to go buy this? Now, y'all, when you have kids at home, cereal's expensive. Y'all eat a lot of cereal? Oh, my God. I bought cereal all the time. My kids lived off cereal, sadly, because I'm not a good cook. So <laughs> cereal, they'd eat supper and then say, can I have some cereal? Sure, go ahead. Um, so I bought a ton of cereal. It's expensive. 
So, and then you pull out that bag and it's only half full. It's like a bag of potato chips. They're, where's everything? Anyway, um, but do you buy the off-brand though? That's a substitute good. You can just go, I can't afford this. So you go buy the off-brand. Price of substitutes. That has an effect on demand. All right, another thing, the last one. The price of complementary goods. All right, here's another definition. Here's another definition. Substitute goods you got to know. Complementary goods you got to know. Things that go together. They complement each other. All right, do y'all have extra hot dog buns at home? What do you do with them? Make toast. About all, hot, you know, dog hot dog buns. Toast? You got extra hot dog buns. They're sitting on the counter. What you going to do with them? Absolutely. Do you eat sandwiches off of them? Sure. If that's no bread, <laughs> it's bread. Now, these things go together. I, I, whoever made that, it, this, that's quite a deal, right? Well, you have to buy special bread for this. I never buy hot dog bread. Well, you just roll it in bread? Yeah. No, you, put, you know, you put it like yeah. diagonal on the bread and eat the bread. Yeah, that uh, that, that's fine. But does everybody do that? No. So why do these come a lot? Of, look, this says 10 servings right here, and you got eight hot dog buns. What sense does that make? Okay. Or you got 12 and 8. It's all, it's a gimmick, right? It's just, <laughs> businesses sucker us into this kind of stuff. But these are complementary goods. So if the, now, what happens if the price goes up for this? What's going to happen to demand for this? Right? Peanut butter and jelly. If the price of peanut butter goes up, what's going to happen to demand for jelly? It will go down because peanut butter is too expensive. Things go together. Shoes, shoelaces. You know, there's other examples that you'll have in all of your stuff. You get it? Okay, now what we've just been doing is look at the poster above Cole's head. Oh, sorry, really more on Malachi's head. The items that are directly related to demand. Now, those posters stay there all year because you will talk about supply and demand forever. So things that are directly related to demand, and these are consumers, things like a consumer, the price of substitutes and complements, are you okay with what is substituted? Okay, I'm not buying this one because it's too expensive, so I'll buy this other one. That's a substitute. Complements are these. These are things that go together like this. So if the price changes for one or the other, demand will change. All right, that's right. The income of a person, the income of people, the personal preferences and taste and fashion of people will change demand. If you look at... Um, okay, y'all, there's going to be a time when hoodies are out of fashion. No, that's a class. Okay, there goes my whole class. Uh, I got like 14 hoodies. I know y'all do too, right? So, personal taste and preference, if that goes out of style, look what happens to demand. Of course, we won't buy it anymore. Um, personal taste and preference, that's all that means. All right, expectations of higher prices. If you think the price, you heard that the price of gas is going to go up, what are you going to do right now? Go buy it today, right? So demand will go up because of an expectation of higher prices. Duh. Okay, what's happening to housing in Jefferson? Yes, it's going crazy. Okay, why? There's not enough, so they're building houses like crazy expectations of higher prices so if you want to buy a house or build a house now's the time right because is it going to get cheaper prices of houses really don't go down do they so expectations of higher prices people go by now because you think of what's going to happen or maybe even lower prices do prices on items go down i think gas will be cheaper next week or heating oil do you, I don't know, do you know, I have gas at my house, at this house. But I used to have, have to buy heating oil for my house. It was an oil furnace. And in, so I would, I would say, oh, the price is going to go up. Or buy it in the summer when the price is down, you know. Expectations, that's going to drive demand. And the number of consumers. How many people are out there 
So what's driving higher prices in Jefferson? Number of consumers. Because people want my house, I can charge what I kind of want to, right? Number of consumers. People want to move in. So now what we're going to do, y'all, this is the ever exciting part. We're going to look at this demand curve. Demand goes this way. We're going to move it one direction or the other. <gasps> I know you're excited. Okay, now we need to get up and move. So your third and final sheet for today, come get this. Okay, shifting demand. Here's a stack and here's a stack. Because y'all need to get up and Come get one. All right, go. Now we're going to move the curve. Oh, my God. Hey, Mom. Oh, <laughs> All right, our third and final sheet today, but we're going to watch Mr. Clifford here and talk about shifting demand. All right, we're going to shift demand. Okay, ready? All right, Tyson lights out for just a minute. Hey, how are you doing, students? This is Mr. Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Right now, we're going to talk about demand. And since demand has to do with buyers and consumers, I'm going to explain it all consuming this gallon of milk. So here we go. Let's start it up. That first taste of milk is just wonderful, right? Cold, refreshing. The first thing you have to understand about demand is the law of demand, which says that there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demand. That means when the price goes down, the quantity demand increases. And if the price goes down, the quantity demand goes up again. So take a look at this demand schedule. As you can see, when the price goes down, the quantity demand it goes up. When the price goes down to four, three, two, and one, the quantity demand it increases. Now, when you plot these points, you're going to get a demand curve. Which okay. We're good, right? Everybody understands this very easy concept of plotting the points. And as the price of a product, price is always over here, always. Quantity, see, quantity demanded is going to be right here. Since he's talking about price, he's going to talk about how many people are willing to buy at a certain price. That is quantity demanded, QD. And a demand curve always goes this direction, okay? Big concepts, very important. All right, now. It looks like this. It's a downward sloping curve showing the law of demand. Now, there are three reasons why the demand curve is downward sloping. It's the reason for the law of demand. It's the substitution effect, the income effect, and the law of diminishing marginal. Okay, what's substitution? We already had this. What's substitution? If things are too expensive, what are consumers going to do? They're going to buy the cheaper version. They're going to go to something else. They're going to substitute. If price is too high. Now, there are some items, though. Do I have a choice about gasoline? There is no substitute, right? Oh. So, and we, won't, we don't have this as part of your test or anything, but it's called inelastic. If I, if I need insulin, if I'm diabetic and I need insulin, I don't care what the price is. I've got to buy it. Okay, gasoline, I don't care what the price is. We have to buy it. Now, I can reduce consumption of it, but I still have to buy it, don't I? Now, insulin, can I reduce consumption of insulin if I, if I need insulin to feel good and all that and be, be healthy? That's called inelastic. I don't care what the price is, I'm going to buy it, period. So I can't substitute, but this drives demand. If people, if the prices get too high, then they will substitute. Okay, what does this mean? We just had this. The income of people will drive demand. Now, so President Biden has talked about raising minimum wage to $15 an hour. What have you just done? If that, fo if that follows through, if that passes in Congress, what have you done? Everything will increase. People, there will be more money in circulation, right? So what are people going to do? They're going to go buy. 
That's an income effect. So demand will increase because people have more money. Very good. All right. Now this one, we don't really cover very much, but it's easy to understand. Um, all right. I have a dozen donuts. Y'all, I'm so missing y'all not selling donuts because my kids for the World War II trip, you know, they carry around the donuts. It was always a great econ lesson for using donuts because I, I mean, there's nothing better than that first few Krispy Kremes that you know they just made this morning. They're fresh. <gasps> oh, yum. I miss them. Okay. Now, I can, I can down them, okay? Don't get me wrong. But after about number five, is it as good as the first one or the first four? After... After about number four, I go, okay, your teeth are coated with that sugar and, you know, you're just not getting the enjoyment out of it that you did with the first two. You get it? That's the law of diminishing marginal utility. He's going to drink the milk. So watch this. I feel like I'm losing you, y'all. You cannot drift out yet. We're not done. Well, utility. Constitution effect says ice goes down for milk. People are going to buy more milk because they're going to move away from other products that are now relatively more expensive. So instead of buying juice, people will turn around and go buy more milk. Now it goes the other way. When the price goes up for milk, the quantity demand for milk is going to decrease because people are going to move away from milk and go find a different substitute product. Mm. I wish I could find a substitute product. Now the income effect says that when the price goes down, people buy more milk because their purchasing power has increased. So if you go to a store and you find out the milk is on sale and it only costs $1 for a gallon of milk, you're going to buy more because you can buy more. The amount you can buy with each dollar has increased. And of course, it goes the other way. If the price goes up for milk, people are going to stop buying milk because their purchasing power has decreased. Each dollar gets them less milk. And the third reason for the law of demand is something called the law of diminishing marginal utility. Remember, utility is satisfaction and marginal is additional. So this is the law of decreasing additional satisfaction. Woo. The law says as you consume anything like milk, satisfaction you're going to get is going to start to eventually decrease, which is exactly what's going on right here. That very first sip was super refreshing, but that last one, not so much. So this law applies to somebody drinking sips of milk, but it also applies to purchasing gallons of milk. That very first gallon of milk you get for your family is awesome. It gives you a lot of satisfaction. You can have your milk and cookies. You can eat your cereal. The second gallon of milk gives you some utility, and the third gives you some utility, but the law says eventually each additional gallon of milk that you consume is going to give you less and less additional utility. This concept explains the law of demand and the shape of the demand curve because they get people to buy more quantity of milk. The price has to go lower because they get less and less additional satisfaction from each gallon of milk. Okay, so let's go back to the Krispy Kreme. What happens, y'all remember, when those seniors were carrying around those bags of donuts? By third and fourth block, what started happening to the price? Going down. Yes, they just want to get rid of them, don't they? They're going, here, take this box for $5 instead of at, at 8 o'clock this morning, it was $8. And now at 2 o'clock, it's $5 because they are not having fun anymore carrying around boxes of donuts, are they? You get it? Perfect example of what he was just saying. Bill, let's get more. Let's get more. So a change in price moves along the demand curve. But if something else other than price changes... It'll actually shift the demand curve. For example, okay. let's say a step. All right. Now, this is the part that's new. You understand that other part about prices and diminishing enjoyment and all that kind of stuff as we buy four gallons of milk and all that. Now, this is our new stuff. We're going to actually move the curve. Oh. It comes out that says milk causes baldness. <gasps> that would cause the entire demand curve to shift. <gasps> Look what just happened. The curve. Now, this is different, isn't it? We're not just moving along points of price and how many will sell. Look what just happened. This is a whole new world. <gasps> okay. I'm acting stupid. So you'll remember it because this is different. We're going to shift the whole curve. Now he's not going to talk about how much does it cost. And as price goes up, demand will go down. That's not what we're talking about. Now we're talking about the shifters on that poster over there above Malachi's head. Okay, you've got to memorize those. Look at those. We're going to do those 500 million times. So, 
pay attention to what he's talking about. Look at the list again, and I'll give you a sheet with it, and we're going to practice it. I know. We're excited. This is a great day. You ready? Here left. we go. Every single price, people are going to buy less, and so the curve shifts to the left. That's called a decrease in demand. The opposite is an increase in demand. And so at every single price, people want to buy more. So the demand curve shifts to the right. They're okay. There's the list. There's the list. You've got to know what they're talking about. And I'm watching all these people with their heads down and on their phones and all that stuff. And I'm going to not be happy when you sit there and go, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Look, look, I know it's not yours. I don't care. Grow up. Here we go. Ready? We've already covered these once, so watch. Fashion. I don't like flip-flops and crocs go out of style. <gasps> Taste and preference. Demand will go up and down. Sometimes they're in style, sometimes they're not. Okay? How many people are looking for this? How many people are wanting this product? We'll shift the demand curve. How much does it cost? That's complementary goods, related products that go together. That's, that's hot dogs and hot dog buns. They have an effect on each other and the price of each other. If hot dogs go up, then how many buns are you going to sell? It's going to go down. The people's income, if it fluctuates, then they that will change the demand curve and price expectations. If I think the price will go up, then I'm going to go buy it today. So demand will go up today. If I think price will go down by summer, then I'm going to wait till summer and buy that product. So demand will not increase today. Okay. So at price expectations, what do you think it's going to do in the future? Future expectations. These are what's changing the demand curve. Now there's five shifters or determinants of demand. These are the things that cause the demand curve to shift. The first shifter of demand is tastes and preferences. For example, what if a new study comes out that says that kids who have milk in the morning before they go to school do better at school and they're smarter? Well, that would increase the demand. Okay, now look how the curve moves. If it's an increase, it goes this way. If it's a decrease, it goes the opposite way. It goes inward or to the left. If it's an increase, it goes out. Okay, that's what kids mess up on. That's what they forget. Man curve would shift to the right. Another shifter would be the number of consumers, right? All of a sudden, new customers come into town. That's going to increase the demand for milk. Another shifter is the price of related goods, substitutes, and complements. For example, almond milk and cow's milk are substitutes for each other. It's a bad idea. So if the price goes up for almond milk and it's more expensive to buy this, and the demand's going to increase for cow's milk. If the price goes down for almond milk, that means people are going to move away from buying cow's milk, buy more almond milk. So the demand for cow's milk will fall. And of course, there's also compliments. So when the price of cereal falls, that's going to increase the demand for milk. Now, the next shifter is income. Income is a little tricky because it depends on the type of product. There's normal goods and inferior goods. Let's say that milk was a normal good. This means when there's an increase in income, the demand's going to increase. When there's a decrease in income, the demand's going to decrease. An inferior good is just the opposite. When there's an increase in income, the demand falls. And when there's a decrease in income, the demand will go up. So whenever... Okay, time out. Think of cheaper cereal versus regular name brand cereal. Okay, if my income, if somebody in my house gets laid off, then I'm going to start shopping more in this column, aren't I? because I'm going to have to save money. So I'm going to start buying the Kroger brand of things. That's a way to compensate for that. So as my income, let's say that, that whoever got laid off now gets rehired, then I move away from some of these products and go back to the more expensive products. So think of this as ground beef and then think of this as steak. You get it? So if, if depending on your income, I will shop more in this market or back and forth as people's income changes. Okay, you get it? All right, last one. The question involves income. Make sure to read the question carefully to find out if it's a normal good or an inferior good. The last shifter of demand is a change in expectation. So for example, if you think the price of milk is gonna decrease next week, you're going to buy less today, and so the demand would decrease. But if you think the price of milk is going to increase next week, 
you're actually going to buy a whole lot more today. So that's going to increase the demand. Now it's time to cover a super important detail that you have to watch out for. It's the difference between a change in quantity demanded and a change in demand. So look at this graph for milk. Okay. Now, this is where he talks about the two that we've done today. The first one, quantity demanded, is simply based on price. If it moves on the curve based on the drop in price, then that is quantity demanded. But if this whole line moves, if the whole line moves out or in, then it's a change in demand. There are two different concepts. That's the hard part of this. The rest of this is not hard. Okay. All right. So listen to him and then we'll practice and we'll be done. Right now, you see three points, A, B, and C. There's two ways to go from 10 to 20 units. Movement from A to B along the demand curve is a change in quantity demand. So the okay, QD. See what happens? He dropped the price. So what the price goes from $3 to $2. So what's demand going to do with the dropped price? It's going to move out on the curve and sell more, right? So demand will go increase. It increases from 10 to 20. See these dots? So it's on the curve, though. But what if, and you'll talk about it, what makes the whole curve shift? If you're not talking about price, then the whole curve will shift. So that's the key thing that he's trying to explain. The price goes down from $3 down to $2. The quantity demanded goes up from 10 to 20. Now, A to C is a change in demand. Price doesn't change. Price stayed at three, but people decided to buy more. Why? Well, because the five shifted. Like okay, so what would cause people at $3, demand's still going to go up. Now, the price didn't change, see? The price is still $3. Then why would people buy more? There's got to be a reason. It's one of those five shifters. Malachi's head. Okay, it's one of those reasons. Why would people still be willing to buy at three dollars even more? See, demand went up at, the, but the price didn't change. Why? Something happened, didn't it? It caused it to change without changing the price. Taste and preferences. If people prefer and want more milk, then the entire demand curve will shift to the right. At that same three dollar price, people want more, so that's a change in demand. It's a change in demand. So I got a question for you. What happens to the demand when the price goes down? What happens to demand when the price goes down? All right. The quantity demanded will go down. Prices. Quantity demanded will go up. Sorry, since price decreased. I had to look to see if it was an increase or decrease. If the price goes down, then quantity, how much people buy, will go up. Oh, gosh, this is a bad idea. So the answer is nothing. When the price goes down, demand stays exactly the same. Price causes the quantity demanded to change. The only thing that changes quantity demanded is the change in price. And the only thing that changes demand is one of the five. Okay, this is the hard part. This is what we did first with the price. This is definition number two. These are two separate things. This is the hard part. If it, if it talks about price, how many did people buy at $5? That's quantity demanded. How many did people buy at a certain price? Now, if you, if you talk about determinants or anything, now you're talking about shifting this line out or in. You're changing the whole demand curve for one of those reasons. The shifters are demand uh, determinants. And that's what we're going to practice. Okay. Tyson lights. We're going to practice this together. Look at this other sheet. Uh, this one. It says in big letters, shifting demand. Get your pencils ready. You need to stand up and do a couple of jumping jacks. All right. We're cutting it off. Okay. Now here's what we got to focus on. You ready? Okay. We're going to do some of these together, and then you'll get it. I promise it will click in just a second. All right, so look at our example. Look at your example for big screen TVs. Big screen TVs. Just the, as a consumer, we're going to look for big screen TVs. And the scenario is that it's Monday before Black Friday. So what's going on? Now, look at me. What do, we go, what do we already know the price of TVs is going to do on Friday? 
is going to drop. Very good. Today's Monday. So what's going to happen to demand for big screen TVs today? Decrease. Demand will decrease. Why? Come on. Nobody's going to buy them today because we're going to go buy them on Friday. So demand today will decrease. Very good. See? Okay. Now, so look at your demand curve. You see what happened? Didn't they draw it? Yes. On your ship. You see how the demand for TVs today decreased. So what was the shifter? Now look Malachi's head. Why? Why did demand go down for TVs today? Because expectations of higher prices. And what happened to demand today? It decreased. Okay. See, y'all got that, right? All right, now let's try one on our own. Let's look at pizza. Okay. Okay, clear your head. Oh. All right. Focus. Yes. Just, if we do three, just really paying attention, you'll be fine. Okay, here we go. The movie theater next to my pizza place closes. So what's going to happen to demand for my pizza? Very good, boys and girls. See how easy that was? Demand, and we're going to label quantity, price, every curve. we got to get in this habit, okay? So this is demand line one. This is where demand is for pizza right now. But the movie theater, which has 16 screens right beside me, is closing. That is not good for my pizza place, is it? Okay, so demand for my pizza will decrease, and that would be demand line two. So change in demand, it will decrease. Now, Malachi's head, why? Very good. Number of consumers. They're just not walking by my pizza place anymore, are they? So my number of consumers has gone. Now, questions. Did you follow our way of thinking here? Okay, next one. A new study shows eating ice cream for breakfast promotes weight loss. I am oh, in. So... What's going to happen to demand for ice cream? It will increase. So draw your curve like this and label it D2. Quantity price. See, that's not hard, is it? Now, Malachi's head, why? I heard it correct somewhere. Why did it change? Taste and preference. Taste and preference. Okay, anybody have a question? If you're sitting there going, okay, I don't get that one. Get it now. Good. Yes, ma'am. May I have Courtney do it for checkout, please? In a minute. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, number three, diamond earrings. The economy is booming. That's good. So, are people going to go buy diamonds? Yes, very good. So, change in demand. Demand will increase. Why? Very good. See, I told you, after the third one, we get it. All right, do number four by yourself. Oh, this one's tricky. Oh, watch this one. This one's got a twist to it. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so 40% of the coffee crop is gone. So coffee is going up in price. So look at what your market is, though. The question's about tea. Ah, tricky, tricky, tricky. 
So what's going to happen to the price of T? I mean, sorry, demand for T. It will increase. Very good. And why? Very good. Substitute. Yep. Demand for tea will go up because the price of coffee has, the price of coffee has gone up. Ooh, man. See how you have to think about it, two or three different things here, okay? All right, flip-flops. It's the coldest summer on record, so what's going to happen to demand for flip-flops? It will decrease. Price. Demand one, quantity, it will decrease. It should look like that. Now, why? There's not one about weather, is there? It's preference. That, no, we didn't kill off people. <laughs> we still got the same number of people. People are just choosing not to buy the flip-flops because it's a chilly summer. <laughs> Now, see, you're getting it, aren't you? All right, go to the back. Keep going, keep going. We're not done. Okay, the economy has plunged into depression, so things, people are unemployed. So Rolex watches are pretty expensive, are very expensive. So what's going to happen to demand for Rolex watches? Yeah. It will decrease. Why? Uh, Income. Very good. Income. Income. Okay. If this is not clicked by this point, let's talk. Okay, number seven, I'm telling you, it's very tricky because it's based on price. Ooh. Now, is the line going to change? Ooh, tricky, tricky. Ah, it's only talking about a price increase, isn't it? So you're only moving on the line. So the whole line is not going to shift. It's only going to move based on price. As price goes up, people will buy less. They threw your curve, didn't they? So that's quantity demanded. So it won't, you won't have a, the demand curve will not move. There is movement on the line, but not, the whole line won't shift. It's the same number. No, there is no shifter. People are just going to buy less because the price went up. I know, y'all are sitting there going, what the crap is she talking about? Okay, look, quantity demanded. If, it, if the price, if the price, notice I said price. The price goes up by 25%. So people, as you move up the curve, people will buy less because the price went up. So this is not a shifter in demand. It's only a shifter in price of, how, of quantity demanded. I know, I just lost on that one. It's okay, we'll practice some more tomorrow. Don't worry, we're practicing more tomorrow. Okay, video games, let's move on to number eight. So the game console drops the price of the console. So the Xbox dropped 35%. So what's going to happen to demand for video games? It will increase. Why? And that's what shifter is that? Oh, Right. Compliments. They go together. Consoles, games. They go together. Wait, so, number seven, the price increases. Number eight, the price decreases. But on number seven, there's no change in demand. Number eight, there's a change in demand. Yes. Okay, well, but you are talking about. Okay, if the price is $300. $300. Fly to 
price like that. Right. Then you're moving on the curve. Okay. You're not shooting the whole line. This is the video game. This is the two different Okay, let's do bunny slippers. Some popular singer wears bunny slippers on TV. What's going to happen to demand for bunny slippers? It will increase. Why? Taste and preference. Very good. It's just fashion. Okay, here's the hot dogs. You're going to have lots of hot dogs. We talk about hot dogs a lot. It's just an easy example. Um, so, the, okay, now the price of ground beef drops by 40%. Ground beef. Hot dogs are cheap, right? Hot dogs are cheap. They're the cheap meat. Uh, we won't even discuss what's actually in hot dogs, okay? You know that's well, hot dogs, but it's the leftovers. You know that, right? So, um, hot dogs are the cheap meat. So, the price of ground beef drops, so that's good. So what are, what's demand going to do for hot dogs? Decrease. It's going to decrease. Very good. Why? Price of substitutes. Price of substitutes. Yes. Very good. Very good. See? Good, good, good. Okay. Can you do the old by yourself? Look, two more. We're done. Market experts announce that the price of gold is expected to increase. They think the price of gold is going to go up. So what's going to happen to today for demand for gold? It will increase. Very good. And demand today will increase. Why? Future expectations. Future expectations. Excellent. See how this is clicking? I hope. Some people are sitting there going, oh, my God. Okay, last one. Lucky Bamboo Chinese Food. A new apartment complex has been, been built across the street. Restaurant heaven, right? Throw up 900 apartments across the street from my restaurant. Yeehaw. So what's going to happen to demand for Bamboo Lucky Chinese Food? Lucky Bamboo. It will increase what? The number of consumers. Excellent. Okay, does that make a little bit of sense now? See, not so hard. The only tricky part is telling the difference between quantity demanded when you talk about movement on the line about price versus a shifter. A shifter. We did two different things today. Quantity demanded based on price and moving the demand curve based on those shifters. Okay, we'll practice some more tomorrow and hit supply. Then the lines, we'll start having lines everywhere after that. Okay, now you don't have to keep all those sheets. You can throw them away if you want to. Uh, it's just, uh, I just thought it's an easy way for us to just walk it through, walk it through very quickly. Yep. Okay. Let me get a pencil. I have to show you. It's easier to show you, okay? I'm coming. Like, let me get a piece of paper.
Amen.